Hey, I'm Dennis Coleman, and you're watching The Music Enthusiast. I'm Sarah from The Music Enthusiast, and today I'm here with Dennis Coleman. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. Thank you so much for having me today. It's a pleasure. Of course. How has it been in London? Is it lockdown situation, like, not as bad? Well, to be honest, it's sort of been probably worse, if anything, for a while. Uh, we were locked down for probably over over a month but we actually just got our restrictions lifted a few weeks ago maybe like one or two weeks ago now so everybody basically went crazy at the pubs as soon as lockdowns were restricted i'm not 18 yet so i wasn't at the pubs but uh it was nice to be able to go out and just enjoy the warm weather that we've been having here and get back into it you know doing performances doing different bits and bobs here and there so yeah it's been it's been really good amazing when's your birthday my birthday is the 18th of May, so actually pretty soon. Oh my God, happy early birthday. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. So I know you're playing a virtual show with Harvey very soon. So how are you feeling about that? I am literally so, so beyond excited. Um, it's at this venue called the Royal Albert Hall, which is this sort of really iconic music venue in London. And funny story, before I went into pop music, before I became a singer, a songwriter, doing all these different things I'm doing now, uh, I actually played a lot of classical music and I studied the violin at a place called the Royal College of Music, which is right across the road from Royal Albert Hall. So when you were there, when I was there playing my violin, I was like 10, 11 years old. I looked out the window of my violin class and I'd see Royal Albert Hall. And at the time, obviously, I was all in that classical frame of mind. So I was thinking like, hey, yo, one day I'd love to go up there and play in an orchestra or something at Royal Albert Hall. And then I guess now this is sort of five, five, six years down the road, being able to play it as a pop singer, play my own music is honestly just mind blown. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny how the way the world works, how like you study there and then like right across, you're going to be performing yeah. like so soon. Yeah. So have you been playing any virtual shows like ever? Is, is this your first one? This is definitely my first one to such a big audience and it's such a big venue. Um, I've done a few sort of smaller virtual performances kind of from the studio sort of vibes, you know, with, with a mic, a piano, just kind of performing it in a bit more of a low key setting for my fans. But being able to have a, a virtual performance on this scale is a whole new thing for me. And to be honest, filming it was quite interesting as well, because I'm used to getting the input from the audience, you know, finding people, vibing with them. And for this, I had like a couple thousand or whatever empty seats and then three dudes holding cameras that I had to look at, which was a little less, uh, a little bit different to normal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Again, you studied violin since like a very early age. Yeah. So how do you feel that instrument? Because like it's the a more underrated instrument, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you feel like it shaped you into the artist you are today? I mean, it's shaped me in a lot of ways. On the one hand, just from a practical standpoint, it's given me a lot of understanding of music and music theory and all the different building blocks and tools that we have at our disposal to create music, which has been super, super helpful for creating and communicating my ideas. Uh, but it's also, strangely, given me a lot of insight into my voice because the violin, even though it's like a violin, is strangely similar to a voice in the way that you can bend notes and add sort of shorter notes and longer notes. And so a lot of the different techniques that I worked on on the violin in terms of my musicality, the way that I would perform songs, I've started to try and apply to my vocals and, you know, add dynamics to my vocals, add emphasis here, a little bit shorter, a little bit more spiky there, and just kind of try and play around with the different sounds and different expression that I can, I can create with my voice. Amazing. That is so cool. I can't play any instruments. I mean, I play the ukulele, but nice. not the violin. Uh, do you have a fondest musical memory? Fondest musical memory? Um, I think that for me, what I love most when it comes to music is performing my music, performing my songs. So I definitely would have to say uh, playing at the O2 Arena, which is another uh, big venue in London, uh, about it was about two years ago now. I played there, and uh, it was just it was just you know a dream come true in so many ways, and it's something that I'll always remember. Yeah, and you also opened for the Vamps. So how was that experience like? Like especially being the opener, everyone has their eyes on you. Like how'd that feel? 
that was a lot of stress in one sense. I was pretty nervous because it was the first time I'd ever performed to something that big. You know, before that, I'd done loads of performances to like 50 people in a little bar or whatever, 60 people at a little tiny club. Um, so going from that to like thousands of people was just a really big leap for me. But to be honest, after the initial nerves, I feel like I just really loved it and enjoyed it and ended up feeling pretty comfortable once I'd been able to push past the butterflies. Um, and, you know, it was just just a, like a dream come true. It was something that I'd been wanting to do for so long and, and just wanting to get my music out there and get it heard by people. And that's that's exactly what happened on that tour. And uh, I'm just, yeah, just grateful that the Vamps let me uh, open up their show. Amazing, especially like at, at a young age, like usually they would pick like somewhere close to their age or something, but yeah, it's yeah. so great that they chose you. And I think that's so amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a big honor. Definitely. Um. So because of your age, do you feel as if sometimes you have to like prove yourself to like make sure you don't get like underestimated? I think so to an extent. Um, I think I definitely feel like I have to prove myself, but something that I'm learning as I get older, so I'm 17 now, by most standards, I'm still pretty young for this, for this industry, but um, I feel like you're, you're, there's always an element of trying to prove yourself and every every step of the way you kind of feel like you know if I get here I achieve this then I'll feel like I've done it but there's always going to be more for you to do more for you to learn and, and improve so I think that that's something that's always with me um but in terms of of like getting underestimated by people I would say it happens somewhat frequently not as bad as you might think most people are pretty open to to my ideas and pretty happy to collaborate and and, and work with me but you know from time to time there's someone who's like who's this kid what does he think he's doing and it's kind of like oh that's not kind of the vibe that we want here but you know we move <laughs> yeah and I could definitely relate I mean I'm 17 mm -hmm. I've been working I've been doing this for like three years now well and yeah so yeah I totally get it but you are killing it <laughs> thank you so much thank you <laughs> I mean you were homeschooled I uh, I think you still are because yeah in high school um so when you want when you want to like do music full time did your parents support you like fully did you have to like convince them in any way yeah i mean they were sort of as supportive as i could ask for to be honest you know basically the deal was i'd been quite academic focused leading up to them so i'd taken like a few exams and things that people would take um a little bit early so i kind of got that out of the way and then when i started to get into pop music and like that started to take up large amounts of my time they basically said we will support you we'll let you do this we'll let you spend your time working on this as long as you still get good grades and you still get the different assignments and things that you need so i i mean it's a lot of work but i was, I was very grateful that they didn't just like shut me down outright which i know happens to a lot of people and you are recording you're producing your music almost fully by yourself so did that take like practice to get where you are now definitely um i started i produced my first thing produced uh i made a beat when i was like eight years old on this thing called fl studio which is like this software that people used to make beats and it sounded pretty horrible um and then i made beats like on that every now and then maybe i'd make one beat every like two or three weeks if i had a bit of free moments to experiment with, with it for the next few years and it took a really long time for me to start to get a hang of it um but since i've been in pop music i've been doing a lot of collaboration and that's something which has definitely helped me to improve my own skills of production, my own skills of writing. Um, and I, I like to have a collaborative environment, which was a lot more possible pre-COVID, um, where you could be in the room with people and watch their their sort of creative flow and, and get inspiration from that and learn from that. So I think I've definitely incorporated a lot of the different techniques that I've learned into my own style, into my own way of production. Um, but yeah, it's a constant, constant learning experience, constantly refining your sound, learning new things and, and just trying to improve. You're killing it again. I have to say Tangerine is such a tune. It is so good. So much. <laughs> and speaking of Tangerine, so how did you relate like a fruit to like the theme of the song? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a it was a weird one. I was kind of 
thinking about this idea of what 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 tangerine means to me you know i have actually spoken to a few of few people and a few of my friends and fans and it kind of means something slightly different to everyone everyone has their own spin to it but for me it was basically about trying to find something that could convey someone who is a beautiful person inside inside and out but especially inside that is sort of trying to put up this kind of macho outside or or trying to sort of push people away in her life or his life um and it was kind of about just like trying to see through that and see through this this exterior that people put up you know we all we all do that to an extent and so i was trying to find some sort of metaphor that could like convey that i i wrote a song previously about a bird that was a whole metaphor about a bird called a magpie and so i was thinking you know what else could i talk about and and then tangerine came to me it's a cool fruit i like eating tangerines i like writing songs about them now apparently so it was a natural fit. <laughs> I mean, tangerines are a great fruit and the song is amazing. So, I mean, it correlates. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. So what's coming next? Is there anything you could like hint at? Well, uh, yeah, I would say so. So, um, I so I have another single coming out. Uh, I'll just say what it's called. It's called <laughs> Wrong Reasons. I haven't officially announced it, but I am now. Um, I haven't shared any of it, but it will be coming out quite soon. Uh, and then after that, there's going to be two more songs, uh, possibly even three more songs to round out a full EP for this summer, uh, summer into fall sort of period. I'm going to be trying to put out a lot of different songs. I've got a few ready um, and planning to make a few more. And uh, I've also... I'm also going to be increasingly doing more and more live performances as and when it's possible to do them. You know, we have this performance at Royal Albert Hall, which I'm so excited to, to do and, and share with everyone. And there's gonna be more and more things coming up soon too that I'll be able to talk about. Amazing, I cannot wait to hear the new EP. And do you feel as if like, it's, a, I hope it's evolved between like the last one. I know it's, am it's amazing, but like artists have to evolve. Do you feel as if you have? I definitely think I have evolved. Um, and I, I mean, I'm always, always trying to evolve almost too much. Like by the time that I put a song out, I've listened to it so many times making notes. I'm like, all right, I don't want to hear that again. I want to go to a new one now. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, yes, yeah, constantly evolving. Um, there's some elements of my last EP because it's always going to have an element of me, you know, in pop music, the art and the artist are super interlinked. So there's, there's always going to be some elements that remain consistent, but in terms of the sound, even in terms of my voice, which has gotten even a little bit deeper since the last one, um, my songwriting, all of these different things are just evolving slightly every time and, and hopefully creating a more interesting and fresh and mature sound for everyone. I think it's gonna be amazing. Um, and this is a fun question. If you could play on any planet, which planet would it be? I could play on any planet. You know what? This is kind of, not answering your question but i'm gonna say pluto because it doesn't get a lot of recognition i feel kind of sorry for it it doesn't really get included that much in the planets so i would give it some love and do a show on pluto i feel like <laughs> the, the, like the cutest planet i have no yeah, idea why it's so cute some people don't even call it a planet i mean i don't know if it's a planet or not but I would do a show there and bring some love to Pluto. I think it deserves a bit of recognition. <laughs> I'm so glad you're giving recognition to Pluto. I think it will really enjoy it. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> and next question, and the last question actually, do you have any favorite artists at the moment that you want to share? Sure. I mean, I've been listening to like loads of different people. My constant favorites like throughout the past few years of my life the weekend and Travis Scott. I love all of their music. They're really big artists, but they have some less known songs that are just so interesting to listen to production wise and sound wise. So I love everything that they do. Um, and then in terms of some sort of up and coming artists, I've been listening a lot to an artist called Serena Izioma. Um, they are a really, really cool artist and uh, I love everything that they're doing. A few other people, uh, Max Leon, I think is sick and Conan Gray as well. Some of my favorites at the minute. Those are like all my favorites. Like Sunday yeah, yeah. is a bop. I am going to Max's, one of Max's like press conferences, like literally yeah. this week. 
and I love Corin Gray. I think he's on my wall somewhere here. I have everything. Yeah, yeah. you have like an awesome wall there, by the way. That's so Thank cool. you. Thank you so much. It was so great talking to you. Yeah, it was great to talk to you as well. Yeah, this was sick.